Try to pull in some kids' entertainment. I know it's difficult to keep the kids amused for hours. It's all free, so there's no charge. Don't worry about that. It's all free there. There's also T-shirts and flags that you can buy at the side of the stage here. Everything's a fiver, so hopefully not too expensive. Brothers and sisters, the next speaker is someone whom, since I have read about her, watched her on YouTube, and then had the pleasure of meeting her and becoming a friend and a comrade of her. I have to say, I am inspired, absolutely inspired by a mother of five, even a grandmother, although she doesn't look it and she probably won't be happy that I've mentioned that. But here is someone who is struggling with a terminal illness, but has refused to succumb has refused to bend her knee, has refused to allow her spirits to be dampened and continues to fight for the freedom of our country, for her children and for all of her children who last week was given and bestowed the wonderful Margot MacDonald Independence Woman of the Year Award. Please give a Freedom Square welcome to Lindsay Jarrett, the Indy Climber. Hi everyone. Um, it's, always, it's always difficult to follow on from anything Tommy says because he's always so passionate when he speaks and I'm humbled by the way he speaks about me. Um, and also, just before I start on one of my tirades, as I do, I want to thank each and every one of you for all the support you've given me as I've become a bit sicker and all the support you've given my family. Because without that online, offline, we wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't be here today and I wouldn't have the spirit that I've got. I wouldn't be able to be a grandma as I became a grandma in January to my first ever granddaughter, Lola. Um, something I never thought I'd see. Um, and uh, she's the most amazing little thing and there's a woman here Jackie somewhere from Dundee who I was stuck in hospital here in Glasgow when my daughter was threatening to give birth very very early and she was taken to Dundee because it was the only place there was a, a cot available for such a young baby the S family got together and they made sure that she wasn't alone in that hospital in Dundee in Nine Wells they came together, they rallied round, and she had everything and more that she needed. And I cannot thank you all enough for that. Thank you. What I want to say here is, you know, I looked at this. We've got 59 seats here in Scotland. One of them is Conservative, Dumfries and Galloway. Let's hope not for much longer. One seat, right? So when you get these unionists and they say to you, well, you know, this is how it is, it's democratic, Westminster is the way to go and uh, it's up to them what happens. I say to them, well, how would you feel if you lived in a country where one, one of the 59 seats was conservative and yet we were predominantly governed by conservatives? How is that democratic? I ask you that. We don't want them. You know, we look at the Lib Dems, are they any better? No, they're not. I come from the Highlands and Charles Kennedy, we have the pleasure of his company in the Highlands. Now that man has very recently voted against an amendment to the Official Secrets Act. We weren't supposed to know about that, funnily enough. That amendment would have meant that we were entitled to know all the convicted paedophiles who were working within Westminster. They voted against the amendment so that we would never know who they were. I asked Charles Kennedy why. Why are you so keen to hide these people? And do we really want, in Scotland, a government full of paedophiles? Do we really? I, for one, as a mother, abhor that. And I cannot believe that anyone, anyone, would want to hold on to their seat that much that they would vote for that kind of condemnation. I can't believe that. This man, this man
man, as I say, is up in the Highlands and we, we fight really hard to try and get him out and we are fighting at the moment with um, obviously the SNP candidate up there. The problem we have is that in the Highlands, quite often people put a cross in the box for the wee local boy. You know, and that's him. And we're fighting a big battle at home. And those of you that are here from the Highlands today, you're doing a fantastic job because they're out day and night, day and night campaigning for the SNP to try and get shot at this joker. Remember that we're sat here right now in, in a, a, a Labour Council area, aren't we? Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? When the, food, the rise in food banks and poverty and children with no shoes, children with no clothes, children going to school hungry and cold. But we have a Labour Council, eh? And let me tell you this, Rachel Reeves, Labour MP, she liked to say that the Labour Party, we are not a party for the unemployed, she tells us. The Labour Party, she tells us, are not a party for those on benefits. Why the hell are we on benefits? Why the hell are we unemployed? Because of the bloody Tories, the red, the blue and the yellow. The Labour Party can get to, they can do one. If you're not a party of the people, which you are not, we don't want you either. Your days are numbered. And as for Jim Smurphy, Jim Smurphy, let me tell you something. You are the biggest asset the SNP has ever had. There's one thing I want to say, and it's, it's all news, but Ian Duncan Smith really got on my goat. <coughs> when he said, the disabled are not worthy of the minimum wage. I say to him, come face to face with me in a debate and we'll see who's worth the minimum wage. As you know, Gordon Brown is not my favorite person. And lately, his latest tactics are this, they've wheeled him out. 350,000 pensioners within Scotland will receive a leaflet through their door from Gordon Brown telling them once again that their pensions are in danger. When are they going to realise he stole their pension pot years ago? All of you people here today, every one of you make me feel alive. Yeah? Every one of you give me a reason every day to get up, look out the window and go, I've got another day on this planet. Each and every one of you helped me do that, and I tell you that from the heart. As you can see, I'm not on my feet anymore. We're kind of, I've got a wee bit of a nice wheels here. Um, but what I did do today was because I'm, obviously maybe you might not see me because I'm a wee bit lower down than normal, I put on some aluminous tights. Can you see them? I just thought maybe just in case I get lost, you know, and, and, oh, a whistle and everything. But you know, I thought I might get lost, you know. Anyway, have a fantastic day. I love you all. And I hope that I can keep coming back and speaking for you. I'm getting a bit weaker of that, I can't deny. But I have fantastic friends here. One in Pat Lee, who will be speaking a bit later, who has said that at the rallies that are to come, if you don't see me, he'll have a message from me. So my voice will work, my words will still come to you, but whether it's me delivering them or not, the passion is still there, believe me, okay? Yeah. And always remember, always remember, people get sick, it's, it's life, you know, it's what happens. But what I leave behind when I go are five beautiful children, one granddaughter, and you guys to look after them, so do the job well, thank you. Brothers and sisters, let's hear it for Lindsay Janet! I'm sure each and every one of you will understand why I said that she is a constant inspiration to me and everyone else in the movement for independence and freedom. Please, when you're feeling a wee bit down and a wee bit tired and maybe your spirits are a wee bit low, Remember the words from Lindsay and take courage 
and take inspiration from her refusal to lie down. Please do.